Let's talk about next-gen keyboards because, well, about a year ago, I did a review on the Digma Rise, and I've used this keyboard as my main daily driver for about a year or two, uh, ever since that review came out, actually a little bit before. And I really loved it, but you'll notice it's just like pretty much any old keyboard. So you got your traditional keyboard, it, it's very much this. And I don't know if I could switch to ortholinear. So when Digma reached out to me and said, hey, we got a new keyboard we'd like you to try. I paid $300 for these things. So these are not cheap keyboards and pretty much all next gen keyboards are around the $300 range for like their base model. Uh, I have a souped up model, which is kind of crazy. The title of this video is kind of probably what draw you in. Let me show you that. And that is the Digma Defy ortholinear keyboard with uh, pretty much everything you could think of it. It has like custom uh, finish. It has underglow on both keycaps and around here. It has a tinting kit built into the back so you can do different uh, angles. It has Wi-Fi, both RF and Bluetooth. Uh, this, this thing's just ridiculous, but I've been using it for two months. And I gotta say, I love it so much. I got a second keyboard, I know. I know first world problems here, but the next one I got was just the base model. Now the heart and soul of a lot of these is this little dongle up here. Um, I forget what they call it, but this thing basically programs your keyboard and I love it because I'm in Linux, I'm in Mac, I'm in Windows, and I can program this in all of those and everything's stored in here so I can flip flop back and forth and I never have to worry about my keys getting reprogrammed or anything like that because everything's stored in this little chip. Now to get on the desktop, this right here is the base model that you're seeing. I got a second camera set up just so you can kind of see what it looks like, the glow. This one's no frills. This is just their base $320 model. I didn't want anything added to it. So you could expect, you know, that's I think what most people would buy that watch this. But also I kind of didn't want to switch back and forth between all my computers. But it kind of crazy. Something happens switching to ortholinear from your traditional uh, base keyboard like this, I'm actually going to do a typing test and your mind can actually learn ortholinear. It took me about two weeks of steady, uh, use of, and then I was like, okay, cool. I got this. And then I switched back to like these little junky keyboards. Um, this one's just like a cheap 20 or $30 keyboard. And I actually didn't have a problem. So we'll actually do two typing tests today. One using your traditional keyboard, one with the ortholinear. Do I pick up things? Now, there is this thumb design right here on the, the side here. And this is actually pretty good. I will say these buttons right here are a little hard to hit on this side all the way on the edges because your hand's over and you kind of have to tuck your thumb. So like when I'm like this, on this other side, you kind of have to tuck the thumb in to hit. That's a little bit strange, but other than that, I really love the layout of these keys and I've actually grown accustomed to it. So let's pull up monkey type and let's do a couple different typing tests. We'll do the first one just using the Defy base model and kind of show it. So let's just uh, win for problem course. All right, so that one's roughly about 70 so words per minute uh, for this keyboard. Now, this one, I, I can get up to about 80 if I do this a couple times. This is just the first pass, and I had some mistypes, not, not super consistent. My consistency rises the more I take the test, uh, but coming from a cold start, I kind of wanted to do that. Now, let's start this again, and this time, we're gonna use the traditional keyboard. I actually picked up a couple words per minute going ortholinear, which I thought was kind of crazy. It was about 10 last time I tested this. So what I'm gonna do again, let's just close out and restart. And the weird thing about doing this, you think that you would uh, not be able to switch back and forth between a traditional and ortholinear, but something in the brain just kind of figures it out. It's wild. It, I didn't realize that I didn't have to uh, just stay on one. So uh, not actually that bad. Let's do this one more time. Just coming from the ortholinear to this is a little weird. I bet I can increase this. All right, there we go. Increased it a little bit, 69% uh, consistency, nice. Um, a little bit better, but the words per minute is still a little bit lacking. So let's, let's do one more typing test. We're gonna go round two coming from two traditionals and then let's just swap right back to the ortholinear, new Digma Defy.
and we're back to about 60 70 it's kind of uh kind of weird that uh it bounces back and forth it's a little bit weird going jarring back and forth if you type it over and over and over again we could get higher results i could get up to about 80 words per minute at about 100 percent accuracy um once you get in the flow of things i don't want to do too many more typing tests i just kind of want to give you the the feel of it of me doing the typing test and I do actually pick up words per minute, which I didn't think was going to be a thing with these next gen. But let's switch this keyboard out and move into a tinted keyboard uh, and try out the, the $700 model with everything, all the bells and whistles. Now, I got to say, just before we begin here, uh, can we just acknowledge this underglow is freaking awesome and cool looking? Anytime I ever have in like a public space and I'm, I'm actually typing on this, people are like, he's a wizard. <laughs> it, it is a very very attractive keyboard and that is not lost on me so is it worth the extra 400 dollars? no absolutely not but if you have more money than cents i would get it <laughs> it's a lot of fun all right let's go um and actually let's before we do this let's do the tinting i, I want to give a little bit of a tinting test all right here we go let's try it one more time we've got a slight tint you can see this is now up a little bit We've got it raised, so my hands are kind of doing this number. Not a too like aggressive tint. I just like a little bit of a tint. All right. So I ended up getting about a 77, 97% accuracy. Uh, consistency, you know, again, uh, a little bit more. But it's, it's really interesting. And the tinting actually adds a little bit of something, a little bit of comfort. I like the slight tint. And is is the tinting kit worth like the extra 70 or $80? Each one of these things, if you want wireless, if you want tinting, if you want the underglow, if you want the the full blown, let's let's pull up Diggs' website. It's kind of insane how much you can actually customize in this thing. So the base model is 329, comes in white and black, and then you can choose your keycaps, extra keycaps you could add if you need. And then for the switches, you got a bunch of different ones. I love the, the Kali Select Brown. So if we come into here, let's go black, keycaps, no extra keycaps here. And the switches, man, this is oh so good. Now you can switch out the you know switches if you want and go with something different. I did also try the Kali Speed Silver. And they're just a little bit uh, louder. And I don't like the loud. I like it to kind of have that really nice feedback just a little bit of feedback not as much as uh your your higher end clicky feedback but the tactile gives that that little bump and i just oh it feels so darn good but it's easy to switch these things out let me let me get the little tool as well so it comes with this little black enhancement kit which is kind of cool and it comes with all the different types of keys you see here. So you could easily try out a bunch of different keys depending on what your needs are. So if you want to try like a clicky, you can kind of hear that. And then obviously that's like a silent. It almost doesn't even pick up on there. Uh, so it's really neat. It has a little removal tool. So you can easily just take this, come over onto your keys and then grab the key and then pull it off. So then the key cap comes off. And if you look, you got the exposed one right here. And you could take this side of the tool, throw it over, and you can see we got the whole keycap out with this exposed now. And then if we wanted to switch this out with like a pink or another brown switch, I could take it. All right. We're back up. We have the new keycap on there. And... That's my F3 search. And if I wanted, I could just put this one back in to the little tinning tin thing. So you can try out all the keycaps easily and uh, use this tool. Man, it's, it's kind of cool. And if you don't want to use their keycaps online, I will say everything uh, on the keycaps is fine and standardized except for the thumb portion. These keys you can't use universal keycaps on, so you will have to buy those directly from Digma, but everything else you could use keycaps from other places as they are pretty standard. But anyways, let's keep uh, specking this out. We're not going to do any extra switches. Wireless does run you about $80. The RF is low latency RF, and I really like that. Bluetooth can be hit and miss. The one thing I noticed is sometimes they get desynced. They might fix that in a future upgrade, but if you do have a desync, you just hit the escape 
key on this side or right up here is the kind of the escape button I have. I press it and then it resyncs the Bluetooth. I don't like to use the Bluetooth portion with the wireless. Uh, I like the RF if I go that route. As far as battery life too, since this thing is kind of loaded down to the gills with lights and LEDs and everything, not a long battery life at all. You're expecting to get about two days worth of battery life is what I kind of gauged it at with pretty moderate to heavy computer use, probably around six hours a day, and uh, then it would die on me. So definitely have to charge it up on, on a basis. But as far as RF, I never really ran any problems for that connection either. But let's just say no. And then the built-in tinting is $70. So if you like the tinting, I honestly love the tinting of this. If I had to redo my order of the base model where I didn't get anything, I would probably say the $70 is probably worth the tint. And the underglow is pretty cool. It looks neat. I love my underglow. But again, you're going to have to go with the wireless option, which for me, I still like plugged in keyboards, even with RF low latency. Uh, I, I, I just would hate for it to drop in the middle of the game and be like, oh, I forgot to plug that in two days ago. And then, and then all of a sudden I lose connection. But if you do want the hotness, you got to go wireless with the underglow. That's going to set you back about 140. Uh, so if you wanted this, that's what you're looking for. But right now, uh, with these options, it's about $400 with the tent kit if you didn't obviously the base model runner about 300 330 which is about on par with a lot of other next gen keyboards like uh the kinesis i think is what uh primogen uses and a lot of other people have mentioned like moonlander which is pretty good and then there's also the power glove which has like this weird curve well uh, and i you know it just depends on what your your thought process is me personally I don't think there's a better looking keyboard on the market than this one right here. And I love the look and feel of it. I love the programming of it so I can switch between all my OSs and I don't have to worry about all those those switches programmed correctly because of the, the Baz core software, which let me show you that real fast. You connect to it and then you can do all these different things and there's different layers that you can pop into. Uh, so if I wanted to switch layer, let's say go to layer two, you see the shift layer two and shift layer three. Layer one, layer two is right here. So if I press this, you'll notice the colors change into that yellow. And if we go to layer three, you'll see when I press this, it switches to a purple to let me know, hey, I'm in layer three. But it goes even further than that because now I can actually control my mouse with the keyboard, which is kind of insane. So if I needed to click on something, and let's say I wanted to minimize that, I can actually kind of do it all with my keyboard. Not the most intuitive, and I probably you probably won't use that very often, but when you have to use it, it's kind of nice that it's there and everything can be programmed. And we still have a lot of firmware upgrades here. Um, this one, uh, they just released a new beta, so I'll probably download and upgrade that. Let, let's just go ahead and do a firmware upgrade. So let's say, let's start, press the top left button, flashing the right side, and then it kind of goes to this weird, like glowing pink, which is kind of cool. And then once this is done, it should move to the left side. There we go. The flashing of the right side took roughly about uh, 30 seconds to a minute. And you can even see the the pink hey it's upgrading this side where this side's left normal uh i kind of like it so now it's resetting the neuron that's the device that holds all my key combinations and there you go firm firmware updated solid as a rock man i hope so that would suck if i lost all my key bindings let's see yep all my key bindings look there we got shift two shift three and all my layers are as they were very very cool i love this so as far as the digma defy goes do i recommend it yeah yeah i think ortho linear and if you want a next gen keyboard and you're trying to hey you're gonna blow 300 bucks and you want something that just looks amazing you can't really go wrong with this keyboard i i absolutely love it however I still realize it's an expensive keyboard and obviously going up to and grabbing every option and spending $700, that's a little crazy. Do I love this portion? Yes, I do. Do I think it's worth $700? Probably not. But again, 
Digma sent me that side, so I'm like, heck yeah. I bought the first one, the Digma Rays, and did that one. And these, I, I, I've just absolutely been in love with to where I reached out to them and like, hey, uh, go ahead and send me uh, one more of those because I am switching everything to this keyboard. And they were very gracious enough to do it. So thank you, Digma, for sending me the keyboards, uh, or at least these last two. I still had to shell out the $300 for the Rise, which... Uh, I still love, and I probably will give and gift to somebody because, man, that uh, that was a great keyboard if you didn't want to switch to ortholinear. However, I kind of recommend, after using ortholinear, I was so hesitant, I think you should switch to a next-gen keyboard with ortholinear where the keys are straight and in line with each other. There, <laughs> It really does improve your typing skills, which I didn't think would be a thing, and I thought it would mess me up in my brain where I wouldn't be able to use a regular keyboard not the case so anywho that's just my findings of this and me messing around with this for several months now i kind of felt like okay i can finally kind of review this product give you my feedback what i thought of it and uh say it's a cool expensive keyboard that i absolutely love and thinks uh, looks better than anything else on the market uh so with that let me know your thoughts down in the comments and i'll see you in the next one